Okay, here we are. I was going to use Periscope tonight and attempt to do a review of Sticks and Stones. Uh, it's a new design by Mark Walker from Tiny Battles Publishing. And as I started to uh, think about that, I really didn't want to deal, deal with the drama of Periscope uh, crashing my phone again. And so I thought, hey, we'll just do it the old school way and I'll hold little cameras up and you know, go like this to you and show you things as opposed to switching uh, between uh, face camera and outbound camera uh, with Periscope, which is a, a kind of a cool feature that they have. But anyway, you don't care about that. What you care about is what I'm about to say. Well, maybe you don't care about that, and I'm just going to be talking and it's not going to matter. So I wanted to talk about Sticks and Stones because I just played my first game, and uh, I was pretty uh, impressed. So that's the short version. Hang on a sec. I got some chilled water here, and I want to uh, not dilute my drink too much. So I'm drinking tonight. We're having a little uh, old Forester. It's, uh, it's a little harsh. Hey, what are you going to do? So, sticks and stones. When I first got the game, I was thinking, and I think I posted online a little bit about it, and I was talking about how I felt like it might be just a rehash of, of you know, World at War. And certainly when you read the rules, you look at it and you go, oh, okay, things get disrupted and they get reduced and they die. Well, that's a pretty common mechanic anyway, so it's not just uh, World of War that does that. Uh, they, it has a, you know, move thing and op fire thing and uh, firing thing and uh, all those little mechanics will come together and it's all set in World War Three. Well, it's kind of like World War Four, but whatever, it's World War Three, right? Set in the 80s in the same uh, genre, right? The good news is, the game has a completely different sequence of play, different set of combat, resol combat resolution mechanics, and the move assault dynamic is different as well. So that could, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, stop my phone from making noise and be right back. In fact, I don't even need to go anywhere. Hey kid, what are you doing? I'm, on, I'm recording by the way. I think my son's about to use the bathroom, so I'm going to pause the camera for a minute. Well, that's entertaining. The new trick of my house is that uh, when they come in and use the bathroom, which, if you listen, you can still hear the water going in the system, is they walk out past my office and they flick water at me from their hands. It's really special. Okay. We were talking about the game. So let's do that. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a quick look at the counters, first of all. Top left-hand side, I don't know if you can see that or not. Top left-hand side, you've got the number 14. On the other side, you've got 8. Down the bottom, you've got a 10. In the middle, you've got a 6. And then that's a 4. Now, the 14 is the uh, armored uh, combat value. I just lost the counter. Oh, it's just not happening for me today. There it is. All right. There's the armor value, uh, armored attack value. And what that, uh, you notice it has a red background. Well, the red, the colors on the counters are going to drive the ranges. So you'll have black, red, orange, and some other color. And then the ranges, are, are, depending on the unit, uh, split up that way. What that'll do is provide you with column shifts as you go through the combat exercise. So what's going to happen is, my phone's going to keep making noises, uh, is that you're going to have these combat factors tallied up. You subtract the defensive value. So in this case, it would be an 8. There we go. Boom, an 8 uh, from the 14. And that would leave you uh, with 6. And that would be the combat value. You look at the sixth column, of which, of which there's not one, and so you drop down to the next lowest. That's what I did anyway, instead of rounding up. And then you would then look for column adjustments based on terrain, based on range, and a couple of flanking is another thing that's in there. If you get a flanking attack, so you've got multiple units attacking, you combine all the combat factors, and they all fire at the unit, and then you get a whole bunch of uh, results 
all right? So either you get X number of hits. And when you get that number of hits, what happens then is you use the defender gets to save against his morale rate for those hits. Soviets have morale of two, US have morale of three, and basically you've got to roll you know, two or less if you're Soviets or three or less if you're um, US. And each one you save on will remove a hit. And then you go through, apply damage, disrupted, reduced, eliminated. So, that's very different. Uh, the flanking is different. <coughs> the uh, impact of range and modifying the results is different. The ability to combine multiple units into a significantly large number against two units in a hex, stacking is two, Stacking is also mandatorily two, uh, in, in that it's the maximum at all times, so it's a kind of a hangover from World of War. Uh, so, you know, you get, you get this different aspect coming in where you, now you can start combining different units together and doing a, uh, a combat against armor or infantry and, uh, and factoring in all these different elements. So that's kind of neat. Uh, I I did, I must admit, when I started playing, I approached it as a World of War game, and I was, you know, move and shoot, or shoot and scoot, or uh, move and shoot and scoot, um, which didn't work out so well. Uh, so it's a different, it's a different metaphor here that's required when you start applying the rules. It's not all going to work out the same. I will say that bone rushing as the Soviet does work, uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, the, the closer you can get, the more ships you can get on your attack. Even though the Abrams have a good defense, if you can get two or more Soviets up close, they can move and fire as well, generally speaking, then you can do some damage. So, there's a, there's a different feel to it. It's similar, but different. And uh, what else do I like? Now, of course, the whole, the whole, uh, there's two other factors that I think drive this game into a completely different mode away from uh, World of War. And the first is uh, command. The command, there's no HQs in this game. What you have instead is a command focus, and it's a chit. And you apply the chit, you place it onto the board, or you use it to impact dice rolls, dice re-rolls, initiative. Uh, you can move it as like a counter across the board to reconnect with a unit that's moved or perhaps uh, connect with another unit or you can simply take it off the board and then next turn put it back on but you're going to lose the benefit of it for that turn because you've got to take it off, that's your action. Uh, it's a very cool idea and it allows you to have some flexibility and take some chances with your units but then know that you have the backup of potentially you know two extra die rolls or one extra die roll depending on what the, the counter says because it changes over time. Um, let's see what else did I... so the second factor that is interesting uh, is the concept of cards and so you have these cards that you start with All right. And each card has uh, factors for both sides. And what they're going to do here, and this is a pretty, this is not a typical card. Lucky Day does not turn up very often, but that allows you to re-roll four defensive dice. What you will typically see is a morale boosting card that will allow you to uh, subtract on the die roll. And the other thing that you'll see most often also is firepower uh, enhancement. So that will give you a plus four column shift, I think it is, uh, or plus two, whatever the case may be, uh, on your attack. That that can make a difference. So you could have you know kind of half-assed uh, infantry unit shooting or a dragon firing, and it may only have a two delta, so you know a ten defense versus a twelve attack, and you have a two. You're not going to be on the two column. You're not going to get a really good result on the two column. So you want to get that up into the 4, 8, 12 column. And to do that, apply this plus 4 or plus 2, and it's going to bump you up uh, two columns. Net out the terrain. Now you're in a range, perhaps instead of impacting, uh, sorry, impacting, inflicting two hits, you might be inflicting four or six. So that's, that's cool. 
you can only play two cards a turn, you get one new card every turn, and you start with you know two, three, or four cards depending on, or none, depending on what the scenario may be. I can imagine that's one of the ways that they can really uh, use it almost like for what I would use it for if I was designing scenarios is use the cards as uh, your special uh, scenario rules so you can have a certain number of them uh, filtered into the pack and they could be special scenario rules that might give you, uh, you know, uh, one of the cool ones that they currently have is uh, opportunity fire but then don't place a five marker on your car, on your vehicles and that allows you then you can fire again so if someone's advancing at you and you shoot doesn't work out so well play the card fire again into the next hex they move into that's kind of, that's kind of neat because you know as the uh, attacker you're thinking well he's only got one shot i'm gonna I'm gonna move in i'm gonna close and then boom you get shot at twice uh, so that so that was very cool i like that as well so what do i what don't i like about the game well it's a print Oh, I almost said print and play. It's print on demand. Excuse me. And so I think the graphics are fine. Uh, I imagine, and I, 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 I know that this is going to be reprinted as a box game. So uh, I imagine that these graphics will be sharpened up. The fonts, uh, I like the fonts because they're normal. They're not that funky, whatever font it was that they had a special name from World of War. Uh, you know, I'd like to see some shaping and shading on the on the box on the boxes around these things, and maybe larger counters would be nicer with uh, slightly better silhouettes. But certainly, the map art could use a real boost. Uh, the, everything's kind of muddy. The, the, the script, it's almost hard to read the hex numbers on the. On the, on the counters. I'm sorry for all the background noise. I guess that's Facebook. Yeah, someone's pinging me. Uh, the t charts and tables are fine. I, you know, it's all light uh, cardstock stuff, but they're fine. I'd like to see something thicker in that, and I'd like to see more details and more explanation on the charts. I have questions about range and exactly how it works, and you're going to have to... You're going to have to be patient with. I'm going to close this. You're going to have to be patient with the game rules, and read them carefully. Not because they're hard, but because everything's in there. You just got to make sure that you connect the dots. Eligible units, whether they're allowed to move or not, after they're fired. You read read the read the rules, Kevin. Don't guess at the rules because you think it's all the wall. Okay, uh, there are a couple of little things in here that in the rules that uh, I felt could have been explained a little bit better. But generally speaking, it's a slam dunk to play. It took me 45 minutes to play seven turns. Uh, very straightforward and very very interesting. I'd like to play a few more times before I go and say it's the you know it's awesome, uh, but it's fun. It's interesting. And I think with a full production values boost and nicer maps, don't have to be mounted, but nicer maps, more interesting, or more interesting terrain, and a lot more scenarios and a lot more units, uh, that'd be really cool. I know it's kind of set in this World War Four mythology thing where. We had this nuclear holocaust, and then Gorbachev and Reagan decided just to have a conventional war. They agreed not to shoot each other with nukes. I'd like to see that expanded upon, but it'd be cool, from my perspective anyway, uh, to see the actual forces and formations from that time and factor in these nuclear waste areas and impact on forces and stuff like that and maybe there's some interesting scenarios that could come out of that I don't, I don't know all in all fun game really really uh really enjoyed playing it uh by myself there uh i'll probably try and play with a couple of friends over the next few weeks to kind of get a, some feedback from other folks as well so it's not just my view that you'd be taking in so uh for 1999 it's a it's a hell of a fun deal probably worth getting just to try it out so that you can then decide if you want to 
uh, you know, invest in this platoon command or whenever it come, comes out. Uh, I think it's relatively well suited to modern era combat. I don't know how it's going to apply to World War II. I imagine it could, but uh, that all kind of remains to be seen. And I, you know, I would like to I'd like to think that the first versions come out as um, as you know this World War Three themed uh, uh, concept, and not one World War Three scenario, or one World War Two scenario, whatever the case may be. I'd like to see a full, like a full whack at, or attempt at uh, some some more uh, World War Three oriented stuff and with a little bit of spooky nuclear things going on in the background. And when I say spooky, I don't mean supernatural. I just mean, what's the impact of that I mean, in combat? And how does that affect the way we do things? Well, that's a long video. There we go. Cheers. Well done, Mark.